Hi YouTube, Autumn Beckman here. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. A few things before we get started. I had told a few people that I would try to get Vincent back in my next video and I was going to put her little perch up here and have her on here but my mom's dog is visiting and her name is Lily and she likes to try to eat Vincent so I don't want to get Vincent out while Lily is here. I have someone who wants to say hi. Actually, she doesn't. She gets very fussy. Don't be so fussy, Lily. This is Lily. She's my mom's dachshund. And she's uh, she's very sweet, but she's a little bossy, too. Lily is here this weekend because my mom is working this weekend. And uh, Lily needs some extra attention because the weekend... Oh, I know. I know. The weekend before Christmas, um, Lily had a sister she's lived with for a long time who was a German Shepherd named Ginger and the weekend before Christmas we had to put Ginger down because um, she had cancer in her back leg and it had gotten uh, far enough that it was um, that it was very painful and it was getting very very difficult for her to walk and so Lily lost her big sister and she's been pretty depressed since then so she's here hanging out with us and the boys and Vincent and laying on the couch and doing dog stuff. So, all right, that's Lily. Say hi to YouTube, Lily. Bye. Also, that wall is blank. It usually has a photograph on it. And in my last video, I put a bag up here and it pushed the picture and the picture fell and the frame broke. So until I get that fixed, the wall will be blank unless I put something else up there. Um, okay, so today I have for you a video about Louis Vuitton straps. I'm gonna do a comparison for you, show you some things that are different on each of the straps that I have, and I'll also compare real straps to the one fake strap that I have. So first I'll show you the straps that I have. It's uh, eight different straps. I've taken them off the bags. I like to mix and match my straps. I wanted to tell you this first why I'm doing this video. So this is to give you an idea because on pre-loved sites and um, a little bit on the Louis Vuitton site, you can buy straps individually without a bag. So I wanted to give you an idea of what these straps look like and the length of them. And I'm gonna show each of the straps on uh, my Speedy 30 to give you a sense of the size and length comparisons and all that. And so one is that to give you an idea of mixing and max it, mixing and matching the straps in case you want to buy a strap separately and you're wondering how it might look on your bag and how long it is and stuff. And then the other reason was since I have this one fake strap and then I have eight different authentic straps, um, if you're on the pre-loved market, this will maybe help you uh, get a sense of what the Louis Vuitton straps look like and uh, what would be authentic, what's inauthentic. So it'll hopefully be helpful um, for you to decide whether the piece you're buying is authentic. Okay, so let me show you the straps I have first. I'm gonna start with the smallest ones. I have this little one here. This is the strap from my pochette accessoire. This is the, I, this is, okay. So this is the only pochette accessoire I have pochette accessories, and it's the Steven Sprouse Graffiti model. And I'm gonna assume, since I don't have any other pochette accessories, that the rest of them are this size. Now there's a new model pochette accessories that I've heard is a little bigger, and the strap I know for sure is longer. So when I'm talking about the strap, think about the old model, not the new one. I also have this strap. This is very similar to the last one, and this is from my Neverfull pochette. It's from my Neverfull MM, and that just attaches on here. I also have, let's see, this strap. This is the one I use the most. This is from my Trevi GM, and I have this one, which is very similar. This is from my Noe, or Noe GM, and I added the clips on, so, the original strap did not come with those. I'll give you measurements of everything too in a minute. I have this strap, which I bought separately or by itself from the Real Real. 
This is a monogram strap. And I'm not totally sure what bag that's from or if it was something you could buy separately. I think it's from the Metis Hobo or Matisse Hobo. I have three more to show you. This one is a crossbody strap. It's from my Turen MM. And this is another crossbody strap. This is from my Eva Clutch. And the last strap I have to show you is this hideous thing. This is the fake one. It's supposed to be a monogram strap. It's supposed to be crossbody. It's hideous. We'll talk about that in a minute. Okay. I'm going to start by telling you the dimensions and showing you the details on the straps. This is probably going to be a long video because I have a lot to talk about. Oh, and at the end I'll show you some modeling shots on the Speedy 30. Did I already say that? Okay, so let's start. I have some dimensions written down, so I'll just go in order from those. So the Trevi strap, which did come with these clips, it is, so I did measurements on all these. I did from end to end on the leather, and then I also did from end to end on the clips that I have here, and then I did the width. I didn't do strap drop because if we're talking about um, mixing and matching straps, it'll depend on what bag you put it on. If you have it on a pochette like this, then the strap drop is gonna be longer because it's a thinner, it's not, it's not as wide of a bag as if you put it on like my Trevi GM where it would stick out that high and then the strap drop isn't as much. I hope that makes sense. All right, so leather to leather length on this is 21.5 inches and all this is in inches. So if you're in another country, you'll have to convert it, sorry. Um, from the hardware end to end, it is 26.5 inches and it's 0.75 inches across. So I think what I'll do is take each strap, give you the dimensions, and then go over each of them, and <clears throat> you can get a sense of what the strap looks like. So this strap is one piece, and it's folded over at the ends. You can see it has a little loop here that is sewn on on the back, and then it has another loop here that's sewn just on part of the loop, or part of the strap. It doesn't go all the way around it. It has this buckle and it's an adjustable strap. I did not do the measurements on doing all the adjustments on it. Um, so this strap you can, sorry when I hit the hardware on my glass table it makes noise and I apologize for that. So this strap so you can take apart like this. This one, the Trevi strap has one, two, three, four, five holes to adjust and this uh, little thing slides up and down so it's not sewn on anywhere. And I'm going to show you some of the details and the stamping on it. Put it all back together there. All right, so as far as details on the leather itself, this strap has stitching on both sides of the strap. And on the little loops here, it has, let me see here. I'm gonna make sure I'm being clear. It has these little indentations, which is a very common thing for Louis Vuitton leather pieces, uh, especially on straps. And let's see what else you wanna know about this. The thickness of this, this is a heavy bag, and when you put stuff in it, it's gonna be even heavier, the Trevi GM. So it's a nice thick strap. And what Louis Vuitton does, and you can see that there, is they have several pieces of leather that they glue together and then often they'll sew it together too. Here's the stamp that says Louis Vuitton Paris and it has the uh, R with the circle around it, the trademark logo. And I'm going to show you this part. This is another thing I've seen on a lot of straps where you can look at an edge like this where different pieces of leather come together. I'm trying to get it to focus on the strap instead of my face. <laughs> I have to kind of hide myself back here. Um, so you can look and see when the pieces of leather come together, you can see how it's constructed with the different layers and then it's glazed on the edges. So let me show you a little link there. So just take a look at that and you can see some of the construction. <clears throat> and I'll point out on some other straps how sometimes when they end a piece of leather, they'll taper it off and other times they'll just cut it off. 
on the hardware, they usually have Louis Vuitton stamped on the hardware. So on these buckles, it's not anywhere. Sometimes they'll have it written on the sides. Um, it's nowhere here. So on this strap, it only has the little LV on the clip. Let me turn it upside down. You can see it right here. And it's on both sides on both clips. Okay. This clip is called a snap hook and you just push this down and it has a nice big opening. So this is a bag where if you're trying to put this strap on another bag that has thick rings um, like the Trevi, like the Artsy, um, this will work on that. Whereas some of the straps that have this U kind of hook, you can't get it over those big rings. All right, that is the Trevi strap. I'm gonna move on to the strap on my Noe GM. So here it is. This one is very, very similar to the Trevi strap. It's one continuous piece and it's folded over at the ends. This one of course is Vachetta, whereas this one is the coated leather and the Ben. And the dimensions on the strap from the Noe, or Noe, 25 or no wait 24.5 from leather to leather and I have this on the middle setting so it can be a little longer and a little shorter um, 25.5 from leather to leather 30 to 30 from hardware to hardware but remember that I added these snap clips they didn't come with the bag so if you were to add clips that length will depend on the clips that you add and then it's 0.8 wide so it's just a little bit wider this is a vintage strap. I don't have the year in front of me for it, but I can put it in the description box below. And there are some similarities and differences here between these two bags and what they did. <clears throat> so I'm going to show you here. Um, this one, this one does not have this loop, and they both do have five holes. They both have the same kind of buckle there. On the, the one from the Noe, there's no stamping on that buckle. There's no Louis Vuitton written. Um, this has this little wraparound strap. It does have those lines the, that are embossed on the top and bottom. Here's the side view of that strap and how it's constructed. You'll see on this one that it has, let me get it in focus for you, that it has some yellow stitching right here that goes around. And you can see better on this how it's constructed with the different pieces of leather coming together. Now this strap, or not the strap, but this bag, the Noe GM, was originally intended to carry champagne, five bottles of champagne. So this strap is made to carry a lot of weight, which is why it's so thick. So I have no trouble using this bag as a camera bag, putting my really heavy camera gear in there, um, I've used it at wineries before. This is my official winery bag. That's why I bought this bag to take to wineries. Um, and then of course I use it as an everyday bag also. Um, yeah, so you can see the construction there. The stamping on this may be hard to see because it's a vintage bag, it's kind of worn. Um, you can kind of see it there in the middle where it says Louis Vuitton Paris. But uh, over time, that gets worn down because you're constantly touching it right there. On the back, it's just this one continuous piece. There's nothing that looks different about it. I'm trying to keep it focused on the strap instead of my face. And anyway, you can see the yellow stitching on the top and bottom. Come on, focus. Okay. Um, what else is there to say about this one? I feel like that's about it. So showing those two together gives you good comparison because they're so, so similar. I'm gonna go over to monogram strap next. Now, again, I don't know what bag this was originally from because I purchased this by itself from the Real Real, And I am thinking based on what I'm seeing, I know it's not from the Pochette Matisse because it's too short for that but I think it's from the Matisse Hobo. 
And if you have a Matisse Hobo, I would love for you to measure your strap and let me know. And I'll put it in the description below. And then if I get a response, I'll do a pinned post so that um, if you're watching this, you can check there and see if somebody's already answered this question. But this strap, leather to leather, is 25 inches. With the clips, it's 28.75, and then it's 0.75 wide this way. Now this one, I'll compare. Um, oh, and this is one continuous piece, and it's just folded at the ends like it, I mean, it stops at the ends. It's not something that's a strap that's then folded over that you can adjust on both ends. So this is not adjustable at the ends, it's only adjustable in the middle, and it, did I say it's one continuous piece? Because it's not, it's actually two pieces, so it'll come apart. It's quite tight, so that's something. So it comes apart into these two pieces, and I have kept it on wherever it was when I got the strap. I have it on the longest length here because it's quite a short strap. And that's one of the things I've noticed about this. I, I haven't even worn this yet. I've had it for probably two months and I haven't worn it because I feel like it's a little too short and I may need to um, get a longer strap. I'm just putting it back together. Okay, so I'm gonna compare the buckles here to the, this, the Trevi, this is the monogram. So, and I'm gonna turn that upside down so it looks the same. All right, so the buckles look pretty much the same. Now the only difference here on this monogram strap is that on the side of this buckle, it does say Louis Vuitton, and it says that on both sides. And the strap itself is not stamped Louis Vuitton anywhere, so that's where it says it. Uh, the buckles, on the end, those say Louis Vuitton on the buckle. It's upside down. So you can see, if it'll focus, you can see it says Louis Vuitton there on the buckle. It says that on both sides and on both buckles. All right, this strap has the gold um, little rivets. I don't know if that's quite the right word for that, but around each of the holes, which is one of the reasons that I wanted the strap because I thought that was so pretty and I didn't have a monogram strap. I thought this would be a good bag to put on monogram bags that have Vachetta straps. So if it's raining or something, I can use this instead and I don't have to worry about the Vachetta strap getting watermarks on it. So that's why I got this strap. Um, this has stitching on both ends. And that's how it looks on the back. And this strap has this floret running the whole way through. And it's very even. I'm gonna show you the back too. So it's the same flower the whole way down. And it's even and symmetrical. And when I show you the fake strap, you'll notice a huge, huge difference with that. Um, I gave you the dimensions on this. I want to show you the this part because I showed you this on the other bags, how the leather is constructed here. This is a thinner strap than the other two I showed you. And you can still see like, where is it? Right here where the two pieces of leather come together and then they have the glazing there. And then I want to show you the ends on this because they're constructed differently from the straps I've shown you. So there you see that it's just sewn straight across. Here's the back side. Um, this is maybe a little difficult to tell, but this is the edge of the leather. It's the edge of this piece down here, just cut straight off and glazed. And then, and then it's sewn, as you can see. And then I'll show you the side view. You can see that piece that's cut off on the top and how the leather is glued and, glued and sewn and glazed on the end. All right, so that is the monogram strap. Next, I'll show you the Turen strap. So this is the strap from my Turen MM. I keep my crossbody straps um, curled up 
the way that I just showed it to you. So like this and then clipped together and inside the bag. Well, this one I keep inside the Turan. The Eva strap I keep in a separate bag because the Eva is so small it would squash it and make it kind of oval shaped. All right, this bag has some a little bit of a different construction in some places. So, oh, let me give you the measurements first. From leather to leather, it's 42.5 inches. With the clips, it's 46 inches, and then the width is 0.6. So this is definitely thinner than some other ones. This is meant to be a crossbody strap. I'm not a crossbody bag kind of girl, so I wear it on my shoulder, which makes the bag hang a little lower than I'd really like it to, but it hasn't been a problem. So on this one, I'll show you the buckle in the clip here and this has one two three four five that seems to be pretty standard five holes to adjust and I'll compare that with this strap and I'll turn that upside down so you can see how much bigger the the strap from the Noe is you can see on the two rings here I know it's not focused right now the rings here that it has that embossing and this one moves the other one does not that one's sewn in place I'm going to turn the Turen strap around so you can see the back because there's some inter interesting stitching and construction back there um, and then I'll show you the back of this and how that's different okay um, I'm just going to show you this so you can get an idea of the stitching and not talk too much about it because a lot of this is just for you to see and compare to straps that you might be looking at or bags you might looking at, be looking at that have these straps. Uh, this strap has, from what I can tell, it looks like two pieces of leather that are sewn together and then glazed on the edges and then it also has the stitching down the middle for the whole strap and it has the embossed lines on both sides running the length of the strap when they end the stitching they do a little t-shape here on this particular one and then let me show you the ends of the bag this does not have louis vuitton stamped on the leather anywhere nope it does not it does have it on the clips so see Louis Vuitton there that's on both sides of the clips and on both clips there is no stamping on that buckle on this strap and then I want to show you the end of the strap and how that's sewn together and that stitching on the very bottom goes all the way around the edge of the strap and then there's the back and you can see how this piece of leather comes up here and stops and I'll show you the edge of it <clears throat> so this is what I was talking about earlier when I said some of the pieces are just cut off and sewn and other pieces taper down this is one that tapers you can see it doesn't taper as much as some other ones but yeah okay so that's the Turen strap clip close that back up the Eva strap is the simplest of the long straps that I have. It is one continuous piece. The Turan, by the way, anything that has a buckle like that is going to come apart. So that one is two pieces of leather, um, just like the what are, just like the monogram strap that I took apart and showed you the two pieces. So this one is just one piece. There's no buckle on it at all, and it's just the aben that is. And it's got sewing on both sides and it looks like two pieces of leather that are glazed on the edges glued and sewn on the edges all right the there's no stamping on this and the only stamping is on the hardware so there's nothing on the leather itself this one I'm trying to not show you that upside down so this has the LV stamped on the clip and again, it's on both sides and both clips. And then I'll show you the end of this. So it has that squared off stitching. And here's the back. It does the same thing where it tapers off, the leather tapers off here. 
just like the Turen strap. And you can see how the different levels or layers of the leather are put together, glued, sewn, and glazed. Okay, so that's the Eva strap. I'm going to show you the two smaller straps now. This is from the Pochette Accessoire, and <clears throat> this is just this continuous, oops, get it all on camera. This continuous piece, it has this little buckle here, because what you do is put it over, if you're not familiar, you'd put it through one of these clips here, and then this would go through there, and that's how it attaches on, and then you clip it to the other side. So that's why it has this hole at the end, so the clip can go through. Um, this is, it looks like just one piece of leather, just one thickness, and it has that embossing on both sides. The embossing goes all around the point there at the end, and then on this end, it is cut off. So you can see how different that is, the cut off versus the glazing. It has the stitching that goes all the way around, just like on the Turen, yellow stitching. And then the only stamping on this is on the clip, and that's the little LV. And again, that's on both sides. Yeah, it goes like that. Both sides of the clip, <coughs> and there you go. And then very similar to that is the strap from my pochette from my Neverfull. So it's one piece. It has the cut at the end to put the clip through. This one is a little bit different because it has stitching down the middle, whereas the other one didn't. And there is no embossing on the edges, so it's just the stitching. The end of this, um, again, it looks like it's one piece of leather the whole way down except right here and this one tapers off instead of just being cut off it does look like it has yeah the stitching goes all the way around the edges and then the only stamping on this is on the clip where it says lv on both sides the last strap i have to show you is the fake strap you're going to notice a lot of things on here that now that you've seen the authentic straps you'll know that this is really off um, one thing, like I said, I keep my straps curled up, even this one. One thing that I noticed right away after having used the authentic straps, and this is not something you'll be able to see on camera, but I can describe it at least. The Louis Vuitton straps, they have some resistance. Um, they have some resistance when you go to push that little thing down to clip it. This one doesn't have much resistance at all. It just kind of folds under your hand. It still works, it's still usable hardware, but that's one of the differences that I see right away. Um, <clears throat> take, take a look at these clips to compare. So look at, the, uh, look at the width of that clip and how it's too much, it's too wide for the strap. This is the real one, this is the fake one. And I'll show you, it might be better to show you on the monogram strap, it's a better comparison. So this clip fits the strap exactly, and this clip is too big. On this clip, on the end, it's cut off, you can see how jagged that is, it's not straight. The stitching is too low on the real straps, it's higher up, you can see it's so the, uh, the stitching on the real strap is pretty tight, um, makes the, the curve of the leather there tight, if that makes sense, whereas this one is lower down. This is just cut off. It's not tapered down um, like this one is. <clears throat> it's a little difficult to hold both of these and show you. Sorry about that. So the real strap is on top, the fake one is on the bottom. It's pretty obvious there. One of the most obvious things about this strap is that it doesn't have the gold rivets around the holes. And you'll notice on the fake strap, it has the flowers, but watch this. So I'm gonna just show you this one. 
Okay, well actually, I'll show you this strap too. So this one comes apart. You'll see, first of all, that this little piece of the background of the strap has a different flower on it. And then you'll see right away that these flowers are off center and then watch what happens Watch what happens as we get farther down. They get more and more off center. They get cut off. It's just really sloppy and crooked and terrible. Um, on the back of the strap, they have LVs and the LVs are cut off and crooked along with another strap or another flower. <coughs> All right, so that's some of the really terrible craftsmanship on this. Here's the clip. This thing is too long. It hangs really far and it doesn't have one of the wraparound things to keep it in place. And it is, let me see, this is, this is gonna be different to tell, but you can see, it'll be hard to see on camera, I mean, but you can see how this one's kind of stiff. It doesn't just fold down. It has some substance to it, whereas this one is just floppy. It's folded and kind of wrinkled and terrible. And by the way, this one, if you didn't see the video that I did on the fake Pochette Matisse, this was a very, very cheap fake. It was $25. So this is totally what I would expect for that price. And I did that video to show people what you get for that kind of money, especially if you're ordering like I did overseas and you're not seeing the item in person. So that is the comparison between the fake and the real straps. I think I talked about everything I want to talk about here. So I want to show you how these straps look on my Speedy 30. So what I do typically is I'll carry the, not that one, where'd it go? There's a whole big pile of straps on my desk now. I carry the Speedy 30 with my Terrain GM strap. I've talked about that before, and it's not made to be carried from just these two buckles here. So I'm very careful about it. Um, <clears throat> I've been wearing it that way for a few months, and I am always looking down here at the stitching to see if that is looking loose or uh, pulled or any any kind of wear on that and I haven't seen any I've been really happy with it and I carry this bag pretty heavy and I usually carry the shoulder strap on it when I have it so I'm gonna get up I'm gonna move my camera and I'll be right back to show you how these different straps look on the speedy 30 and by the way I'm showing these all on the speedy 30 so because this is a bag that most people are familiar with the size and shape of it so hopefully that'll give you a good idea if you're thinking about any of these straps, whether it's for the Speedy 30 or another bag. But I thought it was a good generic kind of control bag to use. All right, so here I have the Trevi GM strap on the Speedy 30. And this is how I wear it over my shoulder. It's definitely not long enough to be a crossbody. I'm 5'3", so that'll give you a little bit of an idea. So that's how that strap looks on the Speedy 30. All right, here is the Noe GM strap with the snap clips added on, and this is on the Speedy 30. I usually carry this strap with my Speedy 35. So that's how that looks. It's about the same length as the Speedy, or the Trevi GM strap. All right, here's the monogram strap that I'm thinking is from the, uh, the Metis Matisse Hobo and it's about the same length as the other two straps too. Um, one thing about this one is that I really love the gold rivets, but because of the length of this strap, they end up on top of my shoulder. I'd rather they be down here where I can see them. So I would like them so they don't show up on the back either. So I would like them to be lower. So I'm thinking about maybe getting a longer monogram strap so I can see the rivets because they're so pretty. Okay, this is the strap from my Terrain okay. MM. And this is to show you crossbody. So it comes out about at my hip right there. I do not like how crossbody bags look on me. So that's why I never wear them. Um, 
And so that's what that looks like. And then I'll show you on the shoulder how low it hangs, but that's how I carry my Turin with the strap. All right, this is the strap from the Eva Clutch, worn crossbody. It's a good length for crossbody because that's what it's made for. So it's right at my hip there. And then as a shoulder bag, it sits even lower. Feels like it's, yeah, it's definitely lower than the Turin strap. All right, so that is all the straps. I hope that was helpful and gave you some information about what to look for and what to look for, well, what to look for both ways. What to look for in an authentic item and what to look for to know that something is fake. So, yes. Um, so they're not 100% consistent, it looks like, across the different straps with the stamping and with um, some of the layering and stitching, but there is a lot that does appear to be similar and that you can count on seeing in different straps. So again, I'm gonna ask if you know what bag that monogram strap is that's 25 inches or so long, um, let me know if you have one like that. I'd love to know what bag that originally came from. I'd love to know for sure what it came from. I have my suspicions, but. All right, so that's it. Thank you so much. Have a good day, and please remember to like, subscribe, and click the bell notification icon to be notified when I post a new video. Thanks so much. You guys have a great day. Bye.